Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I'm back on YouTube. I have finally completed the transition to US. So that is where I'm based now. And while it was extremely exhausting, but also so much fun, but boy, am I glad to be back, to be back to routine life and to be here to talk about pageants. I feel like I'm still in the wedding color theme. Um, in fact, this couch over here, the cushion, I mean, over here is what you see was in fact used on our mandap in the wedding. So it's like a cute wedding memento. Um, and according to the ritual and the tradition that we have also, I should technically be keeping the mandap pillows. So that's what we have here. I love it. And this is going to be the filming space until I have my own studio or basically a filming setup. So this is what we're dealing with. Let's talk about the topic of today's video. In today's episode, I am here to do a full recap of the Miss Supranational finale show that we just witnessed. I in fact watched the whole show live on Instagram um, and I went live on my personal handle and we all watched it together. The whole show, it was so much fun and I think that's something I want to continue doing for a lot of pageants. And Satvik was also in the background. He chimed in and everybody loved it. And so it was just, it felt like it was a whole party and a whole community was watching it together. And now before I begin with my thoughts, because boy, I have a lot of them. I have so much to talk about when it comes to this edition of Miss Supra National, but also I was so personally invested in this one because I had not just one, but in fact, two of my students competing at Miss Supra National 2023. And both of them have done so incredibly well. My two students competing at the pageant were Miss Supranational India, Pragna Ayagari, who was a Conquer student, and also Miss Supranational Malaysia, Deidre Walker, who also placed top 24 and had such a stunning performance. I mean, what a stage performer that girl is. And I'm so proud of both my Conquer students. So first off, the show had some amazing hosts. They were extremely warm and charismatic. And not just did we have the usual host of Miss Supranational, but we also had a former beauty queen. Martin Fitch was amazing as always, but Joanne Strauss, can you believe that she actually represented South Africa at Miss Universe back in 2001? And it doesn't look like it's been two decades since she's competed because trust me, I felt like she could have walked the Supranational stage and she would be one of those candidates that I would be rooting for. Now, the production of Supranational has always been great. I don't feel like we ever have any complaints when it comes to the stage setup or the lighting where Supranational stages are always quite well lit. Um, the stage was pretty straight this time and not slanting like we saw when Ritika Khatnani from India had competed. There seemed to be a bit of a strange setup. This time it was pretty standard and the supranational iconic setup and production was there, which I was very happy with. Now let's talk about one of my favorite opening numbers of any pageant so far. All of the contestants had such beautiful, unique outfits and not just the outfits that stood out to me, but rather the accessories with it. I was talking about even during my live stream as to how every country had a piece of cultural heritage in the jewelry that they were wearing and it looked absolutely stunning. In fact, the African countries were one of my favorites. I love those jewelry pieces that they were adoring. It was such a great start to what was a spectacular show. I have to talk about what my very heartwarming moment was in the opening number, which was the introduction given by Mr. Pranational India, where she talked about not just that she's from India, but she also takes the name of the city Hyderabad. And you guys know Conquer is based in Hyderabad. You also know that I lived in Hyderabad for over four years and I have grown so much as a person in Hyderabad. The city means so much to me. And so when she said she's from Hyderabad, India, it was just like a wave of nostalgia that hit me and made my heart feel all fuzzy things. Right after we dived straight into the top 24 contestants, which everyone was waiting for. And so they started off with the subtitle winners. Now the first person to make it to the top 24 was Miss Photogenic El Salvador. Now when I saw her in the preliminaries, I have to say this lady could be in a shampoo ad or her hair shines so nicely. I mean, 
everything about her face and she reminds me of Katy Perry in some music album and it's so so beautiful I mean such a well-deserved subtitle the next person to make it to the top 24 was Miss Congeniality which was I think something we all saw coming Miss South Africa by the way if you are a pageant aspirant watching this video and you wish to train with me for your upcoming pageant then don't forget to check out my courses linked below we have just opened up new slots for both clarity sessions and the one-on-one -on -one winning personal introduction course and we'll be announcing our next training batches very very soon next up we had Kurosa who also made it to the top 24 because she was the contestant's choice we also had Philippines oh my god she was a well-deserving candidate she won the Supra Chat challenge we have Zimbabwe another one of my favorites because oh my god her stance her physique the most obvious choice and yes she was the Miss Supra model winner which makes sense then we have Brazil who won the Miss Influencer challenge and then we go on to announce the top 24 contestants our hearts were beating so badly because I think every single Indian will relate to this that when India was announced as the last country we almost like I think my tears were right here and I did not know how to feel about it but at the same time can you imagine both my students made it to top 24 if you had joined my Instagram live you would know that I was sharing personal stories of my interactions with India as well as Malaysia and how I know their backstories and these are just two of the countries that I know about but I'm sure every country, every girl who comes at an international pageant platform has so much to share and which is why I sometimes my heart goes out to the girls who didn't get a chance to share their story, who didn't get a chance to you know go further in the competition. Now I had a couple of favorites in the top 24. UK for one was one of the strongest candidates that I had my eyes on. Peru also seemed to be a crowd favorite. Then we had Ecuador who was also such a standout when it comes to her face, her expressions and back in the preliminary competition I did feel like she was so suitable for Grand. I mean Grand would have absolutely loved Ecuador. Now one of the shocking things that I noticed in this year's top 24 is that Namibia did not place. It's been a whole four years where Namibia has won the competition, Namibia has been first runner-up and to see Namibia not even place this year was quite a bit of a shocker but then I guess the competition was really strong. We had some really strong delegates this time and so kudos to everyone who made it. Now after the top 24 we had the sizzling swimwear round and the color of the swimsuits this time, the neon green against the lighting and the backdrop was the perfect color choice from the swimsuits. It was such a standout color and I personally love solid bold colors. I felt like it made the contestants complexions also shine and stand out so beautifully and it was a high energy round. I have to say Ecuador here did really really stand out. I mean you look at her and it felt like she was born to do this. She is an amazing performer on stage. Malaysia as well. Again I keep saying this her smile lights up the room and it did the same effect on stage as well. Now in this particular round, my personal opinion, yes, it is still that India did lack energy but her otherwise strong performance throughout the competition got her into top 12 but what if that was one of the things that held back um, from the overall scores when it came to selecting top 5. And after the swimsuit round, we actually had a very pleasant surprise in store. Now, soon after the top 24, we had such a beautiful moment where Srinidhi Shetty, Miss Supranational 2016, also the India representative that year, was awarded with the Miss Supranational Icon Award and her speech that she gave was so beautiful, so warm and it shows how Supranational is such a well-bonded family. It was such a beautiful moment to see her receive the recognition that she deserves. She has done so incredibly well in the South Indian film industry and I think it was just high time and the most beautiful way to start that award and her being the first receiver of it. Now here the top 24 appeared to have it changed into these monochrome white ensembles which seem to be very very sophisticated and elegant. I actually loved that you know Supranational has their own signature style of doing some of the formats which I think is really unique and actually makes them stand out in the pageant space as well especially among the top five. But I have to say this competition 
I felt like the overall screen time given to contestants was actually lesser than the screen time given to the artists who were performing and the hosts as well because the number of sponsorship advertisements I've seen, the number of performances, at this point we were getting quite impatient and it just felt like let's get on with the competition because enough of these ads and so I hope Supranational takes this into account and maybe you know makes it more engaging for the viewers because I felt that especially after the top 12 shortlist, we would have loved to see more of the candidates. So top 12, now let's talk about some of the most shocking eliminations ever. Zimbabwe. I was shook. I have to say shook that Zimbabwe didn't make it because that girl is just so, so, so stunning, so good, she speaks amazingly well, has such stage presence, the walk. She could walk for almost any designer and she would be a great runway model as well. Besides Zimbabwe, El Salvador, Venezuela and oh my god, South Africa. I don't know how any of these countries did not make it to top 12 and interesting observation that the top 12 in fact had no African countries. It was pretty Asia heavy, I would say. And when we further shortlist to top five, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it was actually pretty interesting to see a whole continent not make it to 12 candidates. My only issue at this portion of the competition was the opening statement that they had to make as to why they are the most suitable candidate for the Miss Supranational title. The candidates were given just 20 seconds to make their arguments well i do think that's very very short time that you can hardly judge or you can hardly even get your reason out in 20 seconds so i felt that 30 seconds would have been a appropriate time duration that was given to the contestants and very few contestants were actually able to really finish their arguments so the cut to top five after that was actually pretty unpredictable given that almost half the candidates weren't able to finish their sentences now let's talk about the evening gown segment of the competition because it was so weird that the top 12 who got selected actually walked in groups of three and so the individual screen time was so less that I hardly got to see the candidates and their full gowns and to be able to appreciate them. What was beautiful however was that all of the contestants came out and everybody got a chance to be on stage and to be able to showcase the evening gowns that they and their designers and their team had worked upon. But the shortlisted candidates actually got less screen time because the remaining candidates actually came through the center of the stage, whereas the top 12 were actually on the side. And so that choreography did not seem to really make sense to me personally. And we just, it was like a blur and it was over in a minute and we hardly got to see the gowns. However, I did see that again, Ecuador decided to continue with the same gowns she wore in the preliminary competition. The red navel thing seemed to be really working for her and it stood out and it was actually quite sexy. Now, India, my goodness, India comes out in this stunning, stunning purple gown by Bhavna Rao. And the last time we saw India, where purple at Miss Supranational was in fact the Kresha Bajaj gown when Avrati Chaudhary competed at Miss Supranational. Personally, I was actually rooting to see Pragna in a black gown, which Philippines did. I found Philippines look to be so simple and so elegant. I also really liked Porto Rico's gown. It was giving me full Barbie vibes. And I actually really love it when candidates go for bold pop colors. I mean, it just really shows courage and it's not that easy to pull these off, but I always love to go for a color that stands out and that's not really a safe choice. Now, the most dreaded shortlist because it just brings you to the final segment of the competition, the top five shortlist. And this is the portion of the competition which I think almost everyone is talking about, but it was, it was the most shocking list of candidates that made it to top five. First of all, the first candidate who makes it to top five is Vietnam. I have to say, nobody saw that coming. She wasn't on anyone's radar. She hadn't really stood out throughout the competition. She was having fun, um, but when it comes to her stage performances, her answers, and wherever we have seen most of her in the competition, I wasn't expecting her to have even made it to top 12, let alone top five. 
so that was a definite shocker now i feel like maybe somebody enlightened me on the reasons as to why vietnam made it the other shocker for me personally was that in the top 5 three of the countries were asia countries and there was uk who also made it to the top 5 and brazil also made it and brazil was i can see how she was a very expected um top 5 candidate but it was still pretty confusing if i have to say my personal thoughts i would have easily replaced vietnam with if i have to be biased then india but there were so many other spots that could have been filled in um the main title holder was not the most expected choice um or the most predictable winner so yeah supranational like i keep saying has given all of us a lot of shockers and a lot to think about and the next time a country sends their delegates to supranational this is where national directors are going to have to really figure this out as to what type of candidate is supra looking for and what can possibly make their girl win now the top 5 obviously had a common question we didn't see any individual questions given to top 3 or anything of that sort and the common question was what makes you a great ambassador for the miss supranational organization here philippines had one of the best answers but let's go in the sequence uk started by answering the question and uk answered that her relatability was one of the qualities that would make her the best candidate for this and it was one of the most structured answered delivered very well um it wasn't a bad answer at all but obviously not as strong as philippines philippines answer was dedication which i really really loved and my favorite part about her answer was while the question was asking what makes you the most suitable candidate or what makes you the best ambassador for the organization she acknowledges that when it comes to pageants and having a title it's not a one woman army and that is what i thought was super endearing and i would have wanted that type of contestant to lead the organization and be the ambassador that has a more collective mindset um and you know she would be a really good team player as well brazil answered the question by saying that it would be her personality um not a fan of the, this answer particularly because she wasn't really able to specify as to what is it about her personality that would make her the most suitable ambassador so that was it seemed like a rushed not well thought out answer and didn't really give me anything to think about and didn't really convince me which is important your pageant answers need to be convincing for most then we had vietnam answer as well um she couldn't really get any words out so i don't really know what to elaborate on it so let's skip that um and we do have ecuador's answer of course now while ecuador's answer was not a bad answer it was just not the answer to what the question was asked and i did find it a little unusual um that she started with oh my god um but i would say that okay keep that candor aside let's look at her content her content was not in response to what the question was and so the minute she stopped talking i remember that on the live i just said but she didn't answer the question and that is why the overall final result of the competition was such a surprise to all of us because when it was philippines and ecuador standing as the last two i think based on the answers alone philippines was a clear crowd's choice and which is why the results seem to be just unexpected we also had the continental winners announced miss india obviously ended up winning the miss supranational asia title which is a huge achievement and i'm so proud of pragna i mean like huge huge congratulations it's been one of the most fulfilling things of my job to be able to see her journey and to see her receive that title and crown was it was everything is worth it when you see your student and your bachcha just like live her dream and it was like i had happy tears when that was happening um i'm also really really happy for gibraltar 
which won the continental title of Miss Supranational Africa because guess what? It was that country's first time competing in Miss Supranational as well as I was told on the live and so I thought that was a really great achievement for the country. I mean, first time competing for small countries, um, receiving a title, you know, it boosts the pageant industry so much in their country and the next candidate who's going to represent the country receives a lot more support from the sponsors, from the government. Um, the team is a lot more motivated so I just feel really happy for the next year's candidate for them. So yeah, that was the overall result of the Miss Supra National show. I mean, huge congratulations to Ecuador. She is an excellent performer and obviously she can slay when it comes to the camera and photo shoots. I just hope that when she goes on to further attend press conferences and media interviews, that her material, what she's delivering is hopefully a lot more targeted to what the questions are and that you know, the pattern doesn't continue because for a title holder, you are upholding the reputation of the organization with your words, with your actions. And so it is a huge, huge responsibility for Pauline. I really hope and pray that you get the crown and title that you deserve and that something bigger is definitely in store for you, for all of the girls who came to this platform and stage one, it's no easy feat. So hats off to you, like give yourselves a pat on the back. You've reached so far, accomplished so much and there are a million girls who would be willing to do anything to be in your shoes. So I wish that every candidate understands that first and foremost, that no matter what the result is, it's also so crucial to be grateful for the position that you are in because getting to represent your country at Miss Supranational is a dream of so many girls and the fact that you were able to get that opportunity you worked for it and you got that chance of a lifetime i think that's a victory in itself and you can obviously carry forward the message of miss supra national aspire as well as inspire other young girls and so yeah that's basically the essence of pageantry and this is why we are so invested in it and this is why we love watching such shows and i have been so grateful that I was finally able to come back right in time from my honeymoon and able to cover this and recap the Miss Supranational finale. As much as I would have loved to make the predictions and hot takes and all of that stuff, I was following the pageant silently throughout the wedding, um, but I was only back to work once the finale was happening. Now the next pageant that I do have my eyes on is the Miss Diva competition. Um, just about to start in a month with the auditions. So I think we have some really strong candidates going for Miss Diva this year. I'm going to be covering about that pageant a lot on my YouTube channel as well. So if you liked this video and want to see more of pageant content, then do give this video a big thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and notify to my channel so that you get notified every time a new episode is uploaded. As always, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye-bye.